What's up guys, Jose Nibais here, hope you're having an amazing day. This is an old likeness tutorial I did back in 2015. I thought it would be cool to share it on my YouTube channel as well. It has been modified to make it more interesting to watch. Ok, let's get to it. So I'm using this base mesh I made a while ago. And let's add some layers. And actually this is my first take on the actor and uh, nothing has to be uh, really specific you just do stuff quickly and uh, to get the overall feeling of his face And as you can see, I'm just checking him from uh, all different angles to see his um, face from all these different views. Unfortunately, uh, because uh, George Clooney is so famous, you can find uh, pictures of him from all views you can imagine, and that's really making it easier for me to sculpt him.
And when I got those uh, really basic forms, I went uh, to subdivision level 2 um, to uh, work on forms uh, a bit more and to have uh, some more polygons to work with. Now I'm just trying to get better lightness. I spent most of the time getting the base mesh look really close to the actor uh, because adding uh, now as you can see I'm just checking him in uh, ZBrush to see that if uh, the uh, his face is just there uh, and after it's done adding details won't be that difficult and this is the most difficult part and it's the most important part also so I'm checking and just to see if everything is close enough to move on So I add another layer here, secondary forms, uh, and I start to add more details, more to work uh, a bit more on fa uh, his facial structures. And this is the level before adding those really fine details. And uh, it's really important to spend a good amount of time here on this level too, just like the um, basic forms. And you have to check your uh, model with the reference images a lot and just to make sure everything is in the right place. Lots of images you find uh, from someone over the net uh, have uh, facial expressions, uh, but you can find some uh, with, uh, pictures without facial expressions and uh, just compare your model with those reference images. I usually spend hours on finding references because that's really important to have so many images when you're doing likeness portraits.
As you can see now, I have more uh, polygons to work with. I'm in subdivision level 3. And so to do uh, secondary forms, you go to a subdivision uh, 3 or 4 to have more polygons to work with. And this is the part you should have uh, all those uh, forms of uh, facial structure on your model. Because after that, you will just add uh, those really fine details. So I have to make sure that uh, after this level is done I will have those forms in my model so I check it with references a lot just fixing the eye socket the eyeball And you have to remember that in photo references, you look at uh, lots of forms uh, aren't uh, seen as much as they really are because of the lighting, because of uh, the um, transcluency shader of skin. And you have to remember that is this is this uh, your skull. This will go uh, probably go to other um, 3D applications to do shadings like V-Ray and. Mentor, so you have to uh, add details a bit more than what you see in images. Uh, now this is the part I add uh, those uh, really fine details like skin pores. And you have to use different alphas in different places. Not just using one for all over his face. Yeah, I create another layer with, uh, and name it fine details. And these are the details I'm gonna uh, mostly uh, do sculpting on it in this layer. Hand sculpting, I mean. Adding details is easier than getting those shapes. Uh, but it's just a bit time consuming. Getting those uh, overall shapes, uh, basic forms, secondary forms, is uh, really uh, the most difficult part of creating a likeness portrait. I'm just checking uh, and here you have to find some really good quality images to see all the details and if you don't have you gotta um, find a, another image another image of maybe a different person but with a really good quality and with uh, skin details kind of that look 
kind of uh, like the one, the person you are scalping. And you might not see some details on images, even in high quality images, but um, these details are there. But you can, you may, you may not be able to see those details on photos. I mostly try to break the surface of the model and add those really fine details because uh, it's gonna uh, make it, the model look realistic when I'm gonna um, add shaders, textures, light, light and other stuff. As you can see, I don't do details symmetrically. I just want to have different feelings for different sides of the face. Even these really fine details. And it's important to see how much time you have to create a model. If it's a personal project and there's no time limitation, you can add, uh, work as much as you want on your model to get the best look you want. I'm just trying to give some direction to the details here. Right now I'm thinking about shading the model and because in shading you lose some details, uh, I, I try to add as much detail as I can. I'm just adding skin pores on top of the model. I spend hours on adding details because these are really crucial to uh, when you uh, want to render your model in other applications. You you will have to have details for a really good realistic feeling to the poetry. And I'm trying to add as much as I can. And I'm trying to check it with different images I have because some details may not be seen in a kind in a different lighting but you can see those details in uh, other lighting setups and 
I'm just adding some fine details to his neck. Now I'm adding some bullion to his wrinkles. Uh, there, the standard brush and some variation to the skin and maybe some details over there. Doing the same thing here on his lips, adding some volumes to those wrinkles I have. I'm just trying to get that up and down feeling of the skin because the skin is, isn't smooth and you have to pay attention to that. As you can see, even in this low, I just found that I can move the skull a bit, a bit more. I can change the shape, basic shape a bit more. I'm just trying to add those really small wrinkles on his neck right now. And maybe adding a bit more details on his face. I mean, those really fine details.
just checking fine details with different angles and to see if everything is right there on my model. Adding variations to your details is the key. Uh, um, break that feeling of your model being CG, you know. It gives life to your model. I just tried my best to um, add details, different details uh, on different places and bring life to his face. Having more details on lips. Maybe adding some small wrinkles here. Having some more details on his neck. And this is mm, the place that when I feel that I'm getting there, I'm just trying to make sure that I, I have everything I, I see. I was missing this part, just adding details over here too. And here I just um, painted uh, his eyeball, the iris on his eyeball to get the feeling a bit more. And here I'm just masking uh, my model, my model surface to create fiber mesh for his eyebrows. And fiber mesh is uh, kind of easy to use, but you gotta spend um, a lot of time on it to get the feeling that you want. You just here have to work on uh, different setups to get a look you want, changing numbers, and just doing fast BPR render to see how it looks in your render. 
and when I'm satisfied with it I just apply that and here I'm just uh, using strong brush to uh, get the basic uh, shape of his eyebrows and then I use a uh, lengthen groom groom lengthen uh, to uh, grow my hairs and just do lots of VPR renders and work with different uh, groom brushes to um, get the shape that I want just try to add variations to it and I do it separately not symmetrically do one first and do the other one after that and now groom swipe to add a bit more variation to it and I just try to move the roots of my fiber mesh to get a better look and when I feel that it's there I go to the other one do the same thing over here and adding variation to it and trying to make it look a bit different from the other one and just checking it with my reference image and make sure that it's there now I, I can work on his eyelashes I just worked on it and I didn't like it so I deleted it and it's, it sometimes happens that uh, your mask your masking ain't that good so you get back uh, after you work on it to change it so it's okay to delete your fiber mesh and do another one And uh, here I just uh, try to create his um, hair and as you can see for hair I uh, try to uh, create um, to, to, uh, to create different fibers not just one for uh, all, for all, uh, all the places on his head and I'm just trying to uh, make different shapes different uh, with using different brushes for hair and trying to mask uh, some parts of hair and just work on that by pushing control button and masking you at the place you want to do changes and just doing uh, lots of BPR renders uh, to check the overall shape the filling of hair with my reference images just trying to add variation to it right now from down here and when I think that I'm satisfied with that I uh, try to create another pass for uh, his hair And just spend some time unmasking it and trying to make the lines as close as possible to the reference image. Here I will create a shorter version uh, with less hair and I will try to combine it with the with the one on, on top and try to make it uh, not look separated. Changing the color of it. And doing a PPR render to see how it looks. And I'm satisfied with that. I applied it and work on grooming it.
I'm just using the same techniques over here and to try I'm trying to check the hair from different views, different images I have from different angles make sure that it looks close enough just adding variation to your hair is the key to get a realistic look and you can use these fibers in other programs like 3ds max or maya you can export these curves and add hair on it so it's important to get a good look it's not just for presentation here in zbrush you can use it in other 3d applications too and I create another hair pass try to find good references and spending some time on masking the areas I want to grow hair on I hide those things I don't need to only to check the part I just want to see how it looks and I just start brushing it Just moving it to get the shape I like. Now I have to uh, move uh, to move roots, so I change this setting and then move the roots of the hat. When I feel that it looks good, the overall shape, I try to add variation using groom spike to it and just making it uh, look different in different places. Just adding variation is the key to have realistic hair. I mask this place and change that. To have a better feeling and try to check my reference images to create another hair pass. And make sure that it's there it looks close to the references. Just set another one. I'm just trying to have BPR renders and check hair from different angles and try to fix it when I feel that there's something wrong with it. I'm just checking at the images I have and I 
I know it's important to do lots of BPR renders just to and just check it that the images you have and make sure that everything is just the way you want it to be. It's kind of there, I'm just checking to make sure. Working a bit more on roots over there. Yeah, this thing a bit tension over there to make it look a bit better. Trying to have some variation over here. And a bit over there. Okay. So this is it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hit the like button, leave a comment and share it with your friends. Also, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your support goes a long way. And turn on notification bell to get notified when I share a new video. Take care.